Hi, Josh. <laughs> hey, Nikolai. Thank you for joining. We yeah. just remember the, the first version of Smart was on RDF and Spark. <laughs> yeah. Yes, a lot of people still miss that. Or I don't know about a lot, but some people still miss it. Yeah, me <laughs> as well. <laughs> so can you tell the story behind? Yeah, yeah. Right now? The, yeah, why not? The quick story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, when I started working on the Smart Health IT project, um, at the time, Ben Adida, who was a MIT computer science PhD um, and had been working on electronic voting tools and actually still is to this day, Ben was in charge of the Smart Health IT project. He had helped write the original grant uh, and he had this vision for using the semantic web. So I joined uh, right out of med school to work on this project. And I really like rolled up my sleeves and learned a lot about RDF and triples and triple stores. It's a very um, beautiful way to represent information uh, that allows all kinds of flexibility and extensibility. Um, but it, I don't know, it still has kind of a really academic kind of flavor to it. And there's a big gap between sort of the practitioners of the semantic web and folks who just like want to throw a JSON example into, you know, their code editor and start hacking on it. Uh, yeah. And we really struggled for the first few years of this project to get traction in the developer community uh, until we eventually saw what, what Fire was doing with these sort of simpler JSON models. I spent a while trying to bridge this gap. Uh, we looked at JSON LD as kind of a more developer friendly take on the semantic web. Um, there are some very just wonderful things that you get with the semantic web stack, including the ability to write a query that looks at your clinical data and joins it with all of the terminology data. So you could yeah. write one query that said, find me medications on Josh's med list that also have this mechanism of action as known in this drug ontology. And you could express that whole thing in one query that, that crossed those two domains. It was really lovely, but getting it to work quickly and documenting it in a way that developers could understand was a, a real challenge. Mm -hmm. So the developers uh, were those guys who resist, yes? This well, so developers, and then, you know, frankly, just scaling the technology so that it worked quickly with data sets that were larger than kind of toy sized data sets mm -hmm. was also hard, especially in 2010. Yeah. 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 Well, that's still amazing. So I, I still think that this semantic web representation of data is the best one. <laughs> yeah. And the, the extensibility model is gorgeous yeah. um, compared to what we have in Fire, where sort of the extensions are, are allowed and take up space. Um, in the semantic web, extensions are no different than your regular data. It's all just triples. Mm -hmm. And do you still believe that eventually this semantic web will come to, into play? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. Maybe the the eventually story there is that we're all just going to use uh, natural language communication and standardize our data at the last mile. <laughs> okay, so data will disappear. Okay, so let, let's wait for a few minutes. Uh, so guys are still coming. So maybe Josh, you can tell a little bit story about Smart on Fire. Yes, how it was started. Like how you found found the gram. How you decided to move Smart on Fire. Yeah, I mean, so back in the sort of RDF days of Smart, I was working on a bunch of demos and getting feedback from some developers and going to meetings about semantic data interoperability, not so much in the HL7 world, but um, meetings where Graham Greve was also showing up. Some of these were hosted uh, as part of an effort called SIMI, the Clinical Information Modeling Initiative. So mm -hmm. we had a chance to compare notes about all these different data models. And Graham was kind of heads down thinking about taking you know, some of the ideas that we were working on in SMART, like a REST API for interacting with these healthcare data and a clear data model, um, but taking everything he had learned from within the HL7 kind of standards community. And so when he had kind of the first draft of, of a FHIR specification, or I guess at the time it was called Roof Resources for Health, um, I looked at that and I thought, you know, that's, that's close enough to what we've been building that I could try porting some of our demo servers and demo apps to use that fire data model instead. Um, and so it started off as a little experiment. And then very quickly, I realized this, this was an idea with a lot of potential. Um, and I thought, well, I need my own server so I can start 
uh, using these RESTful APIs. At the time, there was no open source server for Fire, although there were open source libraries for parsing and serializing objects. So I, I wrote and published what I think was the first open source Fire server back in 2012 or 20, I think that's right, 2012 or 13. Um, and that's how I kind of got really involved in the Fire community. I came to one of the early connected funds uh, and sort of started doing some show and tell. And from there, um, it's been just a lot more of a deep engagement. Mm -hmm. But what was the original motivation for the smart? It was an idea to break these borders to, uh, and to access. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the, the core goal for smart, so smart is a, it's an acronym. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's stored originally for substitutable medical applications and reusable technologies. So the core theme here was if you are an individual end user, maybe you're a clinician or a patient, you've got access to some chunk of health data that might be stored in an EHR, but you want to interact with that data using apps that are really fit for purpose. So just the same way that on an iPhone, you might uh, use the built-in calendar app, or you could use a third-party calendar app that understood your scheduling needs better. The idea is you should be able to swap out a healthcare application and switch in a new one while understanding that the data are going to be maintained by the system of record. So the apps become kind of this platform layer on top. Uh, that was the core motivation. Uh, and we've seen that follow through in the current regulatory uh, environment in the US at least, where we have support for these APIs built into the certified EHRs. Those EHRs really become a platform and apps can plug in on top. 